Now, if you haven't seen the first half of this two-part video tutorial, I strongly recommend clicking the link above, and that's gonna take you to the mold making part of this tutorial. If you haven't seen it, it's a two-part cavity pour mold uh, that we made uh, specifically to cast a crystal clear steering wheel. In order to make the custom steering wheel we're building safe and usable and uh, safe to use, we need to uh, retrieve the original frame that's inside the original steering wheel. So we're gonna have to remove the leather and the foam that's casted onto that frame. I'm going to save the leather cover just in case I need it for something else. But then we're gonna jump into removing the foam. This is uh, polyurethane foam that was casted onto the metal structure of the steering wheel. And we're simply going to cut all of this away. Now, this is again a uh, time consuming part of the project. So I'm just going to skip through this, but basically we're removing all the foam and then uh, exposing the bare metal. Since it is my intent to paint and encapsulate the steering wheel insert in clear resin, I went ahead and sandblasted it to remove any of the last residue from the foam that was stuck to it. And uh, if you don't have any sandblasting capabilities, there's plenty of shops around that will do this for you. The metal insert of our steering wheel can now get primed and painted. And we're going to be using some spray paints. These are for metal subsurfaces. And then we're going to paint it a red color. And the reason why I chose to go with red is the vehicle itself has some red accents. And this steering wheel will flow very well with the red sheen off the vehicle itself. The casting material that we're using for this project is called Crystal Clear 220. This is a water clear casting resin. And the reason we went with the 220 is again, keeping the end result in mind. We're casting a steering wheel that's possibly gonna be sitting in a hot car somewhere for several hours. And we don't want the casting to change shapes and become soft because it's in a high temperature exposure. So the crystal clear 220 goes up to 176 Fahrenheit when properly post cured. To avoid any kind of casting issues with the clear product, it's best to preheat the mold to at least 212 Fahrenheit for four hours before casting into it. And I'm gonna do just that by putting the mold into this little uh, scientific oven and basically preheat it before we cast into it. Whenever you use industrial grade products, make sure that you read and understand and follow all the safety procedures recommended. Now, we can go ahead and start by dispensing the crystal clear part B. And this is a by weight material, so we wanna make sure we're using an accurate gram scale. And we're gonna use some so strong pigments to tint the actual resin. Here I'm using the so strong blue, so strong green, and the so strong brown to achieve a glass-like color, if you wanna call it that. And I'm simply gonna add a little bit of that pigment into the part B, and then we're gonna stir that thoroughly so we get an idea what that pigment uh, does to the resin. Keep in mind that I'm here adding very small quantities off the so strong. We don't wanna overpower uh, the resin so that it's gonna become too dark and it's not gonna look good in our casting. Now, once the part B is pre-mixed, we can focus on uh, retrieving that mold out of the oven, make sure it's uh, nice and hot. And uh, then we're gonna set up our core that we painted several days ago into the middle of that mold and we're gonna bolt that mold together so that it holds that frame in place uh, so that we can cast the resin around it. Here I'm using some bolts with some washers. We're gonna clamp everything down and then we can move on to dispensing the part A. Now, why did we wait to dispense the part A? This is a urethane-based casting resin and it is sensitive to moisture and that's atmospheric moisture as well. So wait till you're ready to dispense that part A. Now the mixing 
You always scrape the sides and scrape the bottom of your mixing container. And then we're going to take the whole mixture and uh, expose it to some vacuum. We're going to vacuum the gases until the material rises and falls and then continue to vacuum it for another 90 seconds. Once the material is vacuumed, we can go ahead and pour it into our mold. And I'm simply going to slowly pour the material till it's about halfway full. And then I'm going to tilt that mold back and forward to allow any kind of large air bubbles that might have trapped inside to escape towards the air vents upward. A couple of taps, making sure there's no air bubbles in there. And then we're going to top off the mold. Now, a full cure is recommended overnight. And once the material is cured overnight, we're going to come back to it and we're going to heat the uh, entire casting at 150 Fahrenheit for four hours and then another four hours of 212. Now that the material is cured overnight, we're going to put the entire casting and the mold into the oven. This is really important to make sure that the material is going to reach its alternate uh, heat deflection of 176 Fahrenheit. Now, once the post-cure procedure is completed, we're going to remove the casting out of the oven. And we're going to allow it uh, to cool down at room temperature before removing it out of the mold. Now that this is all cooled down, we can go ahead and remove those bolts and get our casting out of the mold. Now here I'm going to take those two halves apart and reveal the final casting. So there you have it. Uh, looks pretty good at this point. I'm just going to pry it out and now we can uh, proceed to getting some of those air vents out. Looks pretty good so far. So I'm really excited how this turned out. Our casting looks 100% complete. Now we can just remove those vents and uh, pour spout and we'll be ready for installation. Now to remove those vents uh, and the pour spout, you can use simply a Dremel tool, uh, cut some of those away and then uh, we can sand any of the surfaces where some of the material is still too high. For this, I'm gonna be using a simple um, drum sander on the Dremel tool. And, and that way you can remove some of the high points that could hurt you or scrape you when moving over them. Again, you can uh, sand this to a fine uh, finish as much as you want. You can uh, wet sand it if you need absolute clarity. I am simply chasing this with the drum sander uh, to remove any kind of uh, sharp edges that are going to cut my fingers open. Now, uh, Once that is sanded down and you're satisfied with your uh, final look of the steering wheel, we can get this cleaned off and get it installed into our vehicle. And after removing the old steering wheel, we're gonna pop on the new casting. As you can see, it looks absolutely identical with the difference of it actually being clear. We're gonna put our bolt back on, tighten that up and take it for a test drive, see how it feels. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you would like to give your own projects a go and need some of our product, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. So, and there you have it, a simple step-by-step -step procedure on how to make your very own custom steering wheel or steering wheel that's out of production, not available for purchase. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button to keep up with our latest mold making and casting videos. Remember to subscribe.